it's like okay, so we're gonna be talking about the midheaven, the tenth house. You know, that house ruled by Capricorn and Saturn that pretty much dictates your public image in a sense where um, it's how people see you online or at work and yeah, and how you achieve things. You know, I'm going to be talking about how each midheaven um, achieves goals, I guess. That's how what I'm exactly going to talk about. Where the drive lands in the midheavens and how they achieve said goals that are long term. Anyways, cue that cringy intro, fam. Um, why am I, um, doing the Midheaven first? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. Basically, um, the Midheaven, like I said, is your public image, your public persona, your public whatever, how you act at work or on the internets. And where are we right now? The internets. The beautiful place called the internet. You don't know what you're gonna find here. You're gonna find some really weird shit. But other than that, you're not seeing my ascendant at the moment. You're seeing my very um, influenced midheaven. So that's what you're seeing for me right now. You're not seeing what I, what face I put on at parties or like the face I put on when I first meet people. You're seeing a totally different face from me. <laughs> and usually um, when you see um, someone's content or hear it or I'm not really sure you know when when you see someone on social media or hear someone on social media you are probably you you are getting their midheaven and usually the midheaven squares the ascendants mine doesn't but usually that's the case so basically I guess I am just going to talk about what you know from the internet and the people from the internet rather than um, what you'd see from these people on the internet at parties. I might do another video explaining how the sun signs would be at parties if you want me to, but we're going to be talking about how the midheavens conquer their goals. So let's move on. So Scorpio, um, this is... Um, what's it? Fixed water, number eight. Um, when it comes to these guys, there's... Alright, so I'm gonna be doing a birth chart reading, a celebrity one, yay! On an actual Scorpio midheaven, well, supposed. I'm not gonna be explaining this, that this person has, like, you know, this person's midheaven has been expressed in a totally, completely different way. So you know what? We're not gonna... Whatever I say in this video is not gonna really apply to that video. Just gonna give you a heads up. Now I'll probably mention it in there. Um, basically how usual, well, you know, on the huge, Scorpio Midheavens, um, basically there are two types for the most part. Except for the one that I'm gonna mention later in a video. Like, I'm, I don't even know when. But basically, um, there's a motionless and white kind of Scorpio Midheaven, who's just like, um, you know, I, I'm a mysterious and I'm powerful, and I have sex, and I'm interesting, and I'm dark. I like dark aesthetics. And I keep secrets well. You know? That's what I call the motionless and white Scorpio Midheaven, okay? They, they just want to seem private. They're private, they're mysterious, they're, they're dark, and they rub in your face, kind of. Um, basically, why am I saying that like a whole entire band? Well, I mentioned in another video they remind me of the sign Scorpio, and I guess I'm gonna kind of explain why here. Um, in 2015 APMAs, they performed with Rob Zombie. And Rob Zombie, you know, is a Capricorn with an Aries midheaven, I think. And he just kind of blurted out that he was going to play with Motionless and White when he was supposed to be the special guest for them. And, you know, that kind of ticked off Motionless and White, and they're like, Rob, why? Why did you do this? And, you know, 
Because, you know, when I, when you really think about Capricorn, like, it doesn't even matter that he has an Aries midheaven, you know? Just a sign, Capricorn. If someone has a good Capricorn influence in them, they don't know how to keep their own secrets. They don't, okay? They really don't. They're very loud in public. You know, Capricorn moons are the only Capricorn sign that will keep shit on the down low, you know? Capricorn suns will just blurt out things. They'll be like, I want to do this and I'm going to do it. Like what I just said. I'm going to make a birth chart reading of a Scorpio midheaven. But basically, that is emotionless in white kind of Scorpio midheaven. They're dark, they're mysterious, and they rub it in your face. Then there's a Zendaya midheaven. Well, Zendaya Scorpio midheaven, who is just like, I have power in, my, in me, okay? And I'm going to express that, and I am going to fight for what I believe, and I have political beliefs, and yeah, they're kind of like Sagittarius midheavens in a sense, but they're um, more intense, and they focus on the power thing. They're very self-empowered, and they'll self-empower other people, and they, and these Scorpio midheavens, you know, they're like, I relate to you, and I'm gonna show you how you can find that self-power, so stay in tuned, and yeah, it's like the Zendaya. You know, Zendaya is actually the example that I'm going to use. You know, she is an actual Scorpio Midheaven. She has an Aquarius Ascendant, which, um, you know, is how she relates to other people. And, you know, that does show through. You know, she uses her Scorpio Midheaven to show how to empower yourself. You know, she does set a good example. And you can see her as a good leader and a good person. And in a sense that, you know, she has self-power and she's self-empowered and whatnot. Is she a good person? I haven't met her. I hope she is. She seems like one. You know, she calls out magazines for Photoshop. She, you know, she's got a good head on her shoulders, okay? And she knows how to relate to others. So basically, um, fuck. <laughs> What these two Scorpio Midheavens have in common, though, is that they analyze. They're, this is a psychological sign. Um, basically, when it comes to these Midheavens, they have to analyze details and make sure... And, you know, they do want some perfection. Like I said, the Scorpio and Virgo... I don't, I don't even know if I said this. I don't even know if I use that take. But the Scorpio and Virgo uh, symbols for the signs look very similar. And basically this is um, balancing how to work with others, you know, because Libra's in the middle. And, um, you know, the dark shit that people deal with and how you're going to deal with that deep shit yourself. So basically, um, Scorpio does have that sense of analytical whatnot in them. They're not like... They're not like Virgo, though, because they're more blunt, and they're more offensive, <laughs> and they will make sure you know that. Um, but, you know, they do analyze, and they do want to perfect things. They do like to look into things deeper than the other Midheaven signs. You know, them and Pisces like to do that. They like to look deep. They like to, you know, fix things that are in the, you know, lo the bullshit half of things, you know, I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying, but you know, they are not afraid of the bullshit, and they'll get to it, and they're, and you know, Virgo is kind of afraid of the bullshit, you know, they just say what's in front of them, and what they have to do, and how to fix that, you know, the stuff that they have to do, but you know, Scorpio is just not gonna you know, be like, yeah, this is what's in front of me, but let's look what's not in front of us and look deep down to the psychological half of things and how things are being run, you know. I guess the nitty gritty. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm a fucking ditz. So number nine, which is Sagittarius. All right, so this is, um, let's see. Mutable fire, and it's also ruled by Jupiter. All right, Sagittarius rules over the ninth house, which is right before the tenth. Okay, so whatever you, whatever the ninth house themes are, which is like philosophy, your thoughts on the world, what you're good at, what you're bad at, what you want to do, what you want to, you know, be noticed for. 
this is all ninth house stuff. And when this goes into 10th house Saturn Capricorn stuff, things get like a little weird, you know. Th this is the stuff that's supposed to be condensed and thrown into the Capricorn realm. You know, be put into Capricorn to, you know, be worked on. But, you know, with, in this case, Saturn has met Sagittarius, basically. Saturn's met Jupiter. So, you know, when Midheaven falls here, um, they, Sagittarius feels like they have to do many things and prove themselves to be able to do many things. And those many things could be anything, um, basically. Obviously, any Midheaven can take on any job, so I can't really say much other than that. Um, so Sagittarius has, you know, feels like they need to fulfill a lot of things with all of their talents. They need to do one thing for this talent, this thing, that thing, another thing, and another thing. And they have to be known for many things, but have a solid opportun opportunistic, you know, they need to be optimistic. That's what I meant. They're, they're the sound of opportunity, but what the fuck am I talking about? It's hot, I'm sorry. They need to be you know, happy. They need to have a happy face. But, you know, their happy face also needs to be fun-loving and a little bit offbeat because, you know, Sagittarius is known for having no filter, okay? They're in the middle of Scorpio and Capricorn who really just don't care, okay? Scorpio doesn't care if they offend people. Capricorn just offends people. Um, Sagittarius is in the middle. They don't want to offend people, but they do. Um, that's just what, that's just what they're known for. So basically, you know, this is a sign of no filter. And with that being said, they may say some things are a little off-putting, but you realize that they're just not really serious, so what can you say? They are serious about their projects, though. For example, um, the Sagittarius Midheaven, like, a Sagittarius Midheaven is Alyssa Sharp, and she does say, you know, in the video explaining what her Midheaven is, basically, in her Midheaven series, Sagittarian, like Sagittarius Midheavens have to be the best at what they're good at and you know she wanted to be famous as a child so basically you know Sagittarius Midheavens do want to be in the spotlight but they also you know want to be hardworking. you know when Saturn throws its like weirdo ass into it um, it does produce someone who does want to you know, fulfill their talents to the best of their ability. You know, they feel like they have to do this. this. Isn't this isn't Gemini where you know their sister where, when you know Saturn's thrown to the realm of Gemini, you know the Midheaven realm. Um, you know, Gemini just feels like they have to put their energy into many projects, and that's just what they do. You know that this is a place where they're energized. You know, Sagittarius isn't necessarily energy. This. You know, this is what Sagittarius feels like they have to do. You know, they have to go through many things, and they feel like they want to be recognized for many things. And they're going to basically say, hey, I'm the best at this, and I'm good at that, and I did a lot of things with my life, so I'm good. And that's basically that midheaven for you. They do have a thing in common with their square Virgo, which is kind of shocking, um, which basically is that they will pay close attention to detail when it comes to their projects. You know, they're not just going to blow things off and do many things, all right? They're not Aries. This is like old ass fire, okay? You know, their fire isn't really old, but you know, this is the oldest one, okay? They know that they can't be selfish all the time and they know that they can't just run from project to project without finishing it. So this is where, you know, fire actually finishes what they start. And that's just what they do, you know. Um, Mutable has to fix things. They have to, you know, yeah, they basically have to fix things and projects. So Sagittarius is going to keep on improving whatever they set their heart out to. And this does go for Pisces, this does go for Virgo, obviously, and this does go for Gemini, too. They all are known for being the ones who are going to change things. Um, so, yeah, you know, these Sagittarius feels like they need to be known for many things, but they need to have a solid, you know, happy face on that, you know, isn't too serious and that is likable. Um, basically this comes from their ascendant, um, 
they either have Aquarius, Pisces, or Aries on the Ascendant. With Aquarius and Aries, you know, like I said, Aries is just very happy and just, like, goes everywhere, basically. And, you know, is confident and does have no filter and just like, hey, what's up? I'm Aries. And, you know, Aquarius has, like, that weird has their weird mannerisms and is pretty popular when it's on the ascendant. It's like, hey, what's up, my dudes? You know, they're the ones that are making things cool, okay? If they have no filter up here and they're doing many things, and, you know, putting their energy into many things, it's kind of, you know, whatever. You know, it's not really that shocking. But, you know, Pisces, they want to be known for something and you can really see that in their midheaven if you if like you know you see a pisces ascendant um pisces ascendants can either have a scorpio sagittarius or capricorn midheaven either they're going to be they're going to be offensive either way you know it's either they're going to work hard either they're going to you know have like a very secretive face to the public or they're going to have an offensive place to the public that doesn't necessarily want to be offensive and basically, when Pisces has a Sagittarius Midheaven, they want to have a solid face. But they want to keep that multifacetedness that Pisces offers. Because when a Pisces Ascendant introduces themselves to an acquaintance, that acquaintance is not going to have the most solid representation of them. Because they aren't very solid Ascendants. They give off a different vibe to many acquaintances. And once you get to know them, you know them. And you know what? They, they're like the most talkative water sign. And they're the most... They're the water sign that can go the deepest and go the shallowest and travel everywhere. So when this is on the Ascendant, obviously it's going to like you know mark some pretty different, uh, let's see, reactions. So basically, on their midheaven, they want to be known for something solid like Scorpio or Capricorn. Or they want to be known as being really happy and being able to take on so many challenges at once. Like, hey, I'm mutable, I can do this and I can do that and I can do this. But I also want to seem pretty happy when I am on a stage and seem like I don't care and I want to have my views spew out properly and I want you to know what is up and I am going to be offensive. I don't care, okay? You're going to hear all my thoughts, and you're going to hear all what I can't really show to people without them thinking I'm an asshole. But you're not going to think I'm an asshole because I'm a Sagittarius Midheaven, and I'm pretty cool. And you like me because I'm happy, and I can do many things, and I probably shock you in, in that sense. That I can do a lot of things, and that I have some beliefs and whatnot. So that's basically... <laughs> Um, what's going down with Sagittarius? They want to seem happy, they want to seem like they can do a lot, and they want to joke around. And they manage to do all of that at once. And yeah, it's basically Sagittarius Midheaven for you. I hope this made some sense. Bye.